So, uh, exactly five years ago, we began a project with the endangered amphibians of Haiti. We first received a batch of endangered frogs, that's called uh, Haitian marsh frog, or Eleutherodactylus caribe. We then went on a rescue mission in October 2010. We brought back 160 odd individuals of 10 of nine different species of, of uh, frogs from Haiti. After that, uh, we decided that just having the frogs in captivity was not enough. We were learning a lot of the uh, captive breeding of these animals and we were ready to reproduce a lot of these species, but we needed more information. And not only that, just by creating a captive program uh, somewhere in a zoo is not enough to save the species. We can keep it safe in our facility, but we're not saving the species. So three years ago in 2012, we began a holistic project to gather data on the ecology of the amphibians in Haiti and the forest where they are found. The data from, uh, from that project fits back into our work here at the zoo, but also that data is used so that we can provide that information rather to the people working in Haiti trying to save the environment. And that is local groups like Societe Audubon Haiti and also the Ministry of the Environment. So they receive our information, where the frogs are found, what kind of forest they need, within the forest, what part is the one that the frogs are using, and then they can translate that information into management practices that guarantee that amphibians will have a home, even in a place that has uh, such a bad history of deforestation as this Haiti does. So issues with Haiti are um, deforestation, which is the main issue for this particular group of frogs, deforestation. They did have an earthquake as well, around the time we uh, started to we had some interest in getting involved, so Haiti ecologically is, uh, is in a pretty, uh, pretty rough situation. We have um, six species of frogs from Haiti, and we have a special facility that's set up on zoo grounds that mimics, to the best of our ability, the natural conditions of uh, their natural habitat. On a daily basis, I see all, all the big rides they get fed daily. The other frogs, the other five species, they get fed three times a week. So that's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Um, Fridays and Saturdays, and sometimes Thursday I do my cleaning. I change water bowls, change the tubes, clean the glass. And then on Friday, on Saturday, my last day, I clean the crickets and set up for the new crickets that will be coming on my days off. Right, I started out in housekeeping. I worked in housekeeping for a couple of years. Um, then I applied for a keeper's position, and I was a relief keeper for about a year, year and a half. I mostly worked in Lime House, the old monkey house. And then they started pulling me in the reptile house, which I was terrified. But mainly when you first went in there, you did turtles and did mice, which I was scared of the mice too. So it ended up, because I was born in the reptile house more, the monkeys got uh, started to less and less recognize me. So it's like I ended up in the reptile house, filled that position, and um, it was five years before I was bitten by a snake. It was an emerald tree boa. So after that first bite, it wasn't so bad, I realized. And um, then I, I got to do it. It took me about five years to get used to working in here. Behind me is a tank full of Panama golden frogs. But these frogs almost became extinct, and it was thanks to the work from zoos that brought them into captivity and began conservation programs where they would breed the frogs in good, uh, until they got it to good numbers. It was because of that that the frog is still alive today.